Hey guys, it's Lane here with Hobbies and Man. Once again, and today we're going to be doing another uh, manga review. We're going to be looking at Fire Force uh, Arc Number Three, which is covered in uh, the last little bit here of the first omnibus and the first portion of the third omnibus here up to this part uh, right there, which is chapters 21 to 33. And uh, I'm not going to give you the book facts because uh, if you're you know watching this video, you probably watched the other two and you know all of that already. So. The premise here is that Shinra and Arthur, uh, Arthur sorry, have to infiltrate Company 1 and figure out the issue about spontaneous human combustion and how Company 1 ties into it. Because in previous issues or in previous arcs, we found out that um, Company 1 is the one that's most tied to um, this issue of spontaneous human combustion, right? And so uh, they have to find out what it is. And so the plot line here starts with an introduction to Company One, then a quick battle uh, with some Infernos, uh, then a little bit of a hangout there with Hibana for exposition's sake, uh, where she goes with is Company Eight. She hangs out. She m makes some kind of funny jokes uh, about Captain Obi, and uh, as a way to show up that she does really like uh, Shinra, and that she's uh, taking that kind of interest in him quite seriously, and. Uh, uh, then it sets up the infiltration of Company One using this pre-established thing between companies where recruits can go and spend a month at a different company's uh, uh, headquarters in order to um, kind of do inter-company relations and also to create a, an environment where the rookies can learn more things uh, from other people, right? So uh, they do that, they head to the cathedral uh, we get introduced to Company One again, uh, to the the, the top brass uh, specifically, and there's a big quick fight here, which was a lot of fun. I quite enjoyed it because uh, basically the top brass of Company One mops the floor with the kids, but it works out to be quite fun and interesting and enjoyable, right? So quite like that. Uh, and uh, then there's a big attack uh, by an Inferno. Shinra and Arthur are told to stand back and just watch. Uh, since they're brand new to the company, they will kind of mess up the 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 order of operations, the order of um, of uh, of seniority if they step in, and so that causes an issue. And so they're they're told to stay back. And eventually, Shinra sees someone put a bug, uh, this infernal bug, onto someone uh, that then spontaneously combusts, and so. Shinra chases them and eventually ends up in this place where there's three possible people that could be it. Uh, one of them is Kareem, one of them is Rekka, and one of them is Tamaki, the girl that uh, we previously met from Company One. Um, and, uh, well, now they have to do some espionage, right? Eventually they're caught by Kareem, who joins forces with them because he also wants to figure out what the hell the issue is. Uh, and eventually they realize that it's Rekka. He's part of the evangelist and they're trying to find a spark, a person that has a pure flame, um, an Adola burst, I think is what it's called. Um, and uh, so they're trying to kill people. There's a big fight and then uh, there's a win, but there's also assassins. And so the assassins actually take out Rekka so that he can't give any information away. And then some big infernos that are used in order to um, kind of hide the situation from others by forcing everyone to focus on these big infernos. And overall, this was a pretty good uh, arc here. I quite enjoyed myself reading this. It was very, very good. In terms of the characters, we get introduced to Burns, Rekka, Kareem, and Hua Yang, uh, who are the leader of Company One, and then the three uh, lieutenants. Rekka turns out to be a bad guy. We don't really know too much about Burns yet. Kareem ends up being a good guy, and Hua Yang loses an arm, I think, but there's really nothing that we get told about him that is particularly important or interesting at this time in the story. Uh, in terms of world building, we learn about the evangelists. Uh, we learn about the bugs. Uh, we get introduced some really cool powers. Uh, Kareem has this ability to do acoustic cooling, uh, which means that he uses second generation powers in order to uh, force the flame into a brass instrument, basically. Uh, this kind of like tuba trumpet looking thing. Actually, it'd be more like a French horn or a tuba. Um, and um, he pushes the uh, the fire through it, cooling it, and because it's anime, it basically shows up to be fire er, fire turned into ice type powers, which are pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I quite like that. I thought it was really, really enjoyable. Um, and then uh, we learn about the spark 
We learned that the God is the sun, which I think we knew before, but it gets uh, reaffirmed here. Uh, then we learn about this plan to uh, turn the earth into a second sun, which is kind of crazy. And then we learn about the Adola burst, which is this pure flame that certain types of third generation uh, people can have, which is pretty cool. In terms of art and fan service, there's a lot of good art. There's also quite a bit of fan service here, uh, especially in the earlier parts of the story when there's exposition, we get this like bath scene, um, which in general, I think is drawn pretty well. But uh, the thing that I don't like is that if you're gonna have these types of scenes, um, don't do it if you can't actually draw everything correctly. Um, because you know how there's supposed to be a lot of um, censoring in these types of things? Well, they used a lot less censoring in this, but it then made the characters look kind of weird because uh, it doesn't censor their, their crotches basically, but then they can't show any detail. So they just look like dolls, right? And it makes it really awkward and really odd looking. And so anything that you might have liked about the fan service because it's like, oh, look at this full frontal nudity gets removed by that aspect of them having like these weird Barbie crotches. Um, and so I think that it would have been better to just not have that or have the censorship be uh, kind of tasteful, more kind of like alluring, I guess is, is the right terminology here um, because it just makes it look kind of ugly. And, and so it kind of defeats the purpose of having this cool, uh, you know, fan service bath scene. Uh, this cheesecake thing uh, when you can't really show off properly and then you'd say not to censor but in order to not have to censor you have to do censoring in a different way which makes it look even uglier so i would have just preferred to have it be more of a like a like a bat scene where things are covered or have more kind of you know bubbles and stuff like that to cover up things uh because it makes it look a little bit more uh a little bit nicer basically so yeah, that was a big, long diatribe about fan service, but I, I just find it to be kind of annoying in this case because it's like, okay, we, we want to push the envelope, but they pushed it so much that they had to give concessions in a different way, and that concession makes it kind of uh, uglier than if they would have just censored it, right? So it kind of sucks. In terms of a rating, so four out of five, it was a bit too fast for my uh, taste. I think that this kind of idea of figuring out what the heck the uh, human combustion is and how company one ties into it should have been a bit of a longer thing. And this should have been part one of the aspect that ties it to company one. Um, so I don't really love that, that, that it, that it went by so fast, but I think that it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. And it was cool that it, in how it did it, I just think it would have been a bit better if it was, you know, slower, if it went about a little bit longer and it took a little bit more time to get around to doing, uh, what it needed to do. Right. So that's just kind of a personal opinion though. So it kind of depends on, on your preference and you know, mileage may vary. So there you go. That's my review of uh, the company One Arc. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about it, if you've uh, read or seen it. And thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys later.